had always been drawn to the dark web, fascinated by the mysteries that lurked in its shadowy corners. It was a realm where the rules of the surface web didn't apply, a place of anonymity and secrets. But little did I know that my curiosity would lead me to a nightmarish encounter that would haunt me for the rest of my days. It was a quiet, moonless night when I found myself deep into the digital abyss. My Tor browser was my shield against the prying eyes of the web, and I had explored the hidden markets and forums coming across tales of enigmatic and sinister objects. One particular legend captured my attention, the mystery boxes of the dark web. These boxes were sold on illegal markets, and their contents were rumored to be beyond the darkest of nightmares. As I delved deeper into the shadowy web, I stumbled upon an advertisement for such a box. The listing displayed a disturbing image of a black, ornate box adorned with eerie symbols, promising untold horrors and secrets. It was described as the Pandora's parcel. Intrigued and apprehensive, I decided to take a step into the unknown. I contacted the seller, an enigmatic figure who went by the pseudonym Cyphermaster. Our conversation was brief and cryptic. He instructed me to send a cryptocurrency payment to a specified address, and in return, he would provide the coordinates for a secluded location. There, under the cover of darkness, I was to receive the Pandora's parcel. I followed the instructions meticulously, and soon I found myself standing alone at the designated location in the dead of night. My heart raced as I scanned the surroundings, wondering what horrors awaited me. Suddenly a figure emerged from the darkness, his face obscured by a hood. Cyphermaster handed me the ominous box, and his voice was a chilling whisper. Open it at your own risk. The truth may be more than you can bear. With those words, he disappeared into the night, leaving me alone with the mysterious parcel. The Pandora's parcel was even more unsettling up close. It was adorned with grotesque carvings and symbols that seemed to writhe and move. The box felt cold to the touch, and its presence was oppressive, as if it held secrets that were eager to escape. With trembling hands, I decided to open the box. Its lid creaked as I pulled it back, revealing a velvety black interior. I could hardly believe my eyes. Nestled within the box was a single severed finger. My heart pounded in my chest as I recoiled in horror. The finger was a gruesome sight, its flesh pale and lifeless. It was adorned with a gory ring that seemed to hold some significance. The fingernail was painted a deep, crimson red. I struggled to comprehend the grotesque revelation before me. Why would someone send such a gruesome and macabre item? Was it a sick prank? Or was there a deeper, more sinister purpose? As I examined the severed finger, I noticed a note attached to it. The writing was shaky and uneven, as if penned in desperation. It read, the price of curiosity. The cryptic message sent shivers down my spine, and I realized I had ventured into something far more sinister than I had ever imagined. I returned home, the Pandora's parcel clutched tightly in my hand, my mind racing with fear and paranoia. I knew that I had become entangled in something dark and malevolent, and the severed finger was a gruesome warning. I decided to research the origins of the Pandora's parcel. Hours turned into days as I delved deeper into the dark web, attempting to uncover the truth behind this horrifying enigma. The more I uncovered, the darker the mystery became. The black market where I had found the box was infamous for its dealings in the occult, and rumors swirled of rituals that transcended the boundaries of the physical world. It was said that the box contained a piece of a cursed soul a fragment of someone who had delved too far into the forbidden realms of the dark web. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Paranoia and fear consumed me as I realized that I had inadvertently become a part of something far more sinister than I could have ever imagined. My every move felt scrutinized, my every action filled with trepidation. The nights grew sleepless, my dreams haunted by visions of the severed finger and the enigmatic message. It was as if the box had cast a malevolent spell upon me, its dark presence looming over my every waking moment. In a fit of desperation, I decided to return to the secluded location where I had received the Pandora's parcel, hoping to find answers or closure. But what I encountered was beyond comprehension. The hooded figure, 
Cypher Master, awaited me there. His voice was filled with an eerie calm as he explained that the box held a piece of a restless soul, a soul seeking retribution. My act of opening it had unleashed a malevolent force, and there was only one way to appease it. Cypher Master handed me a rusted knife and instructed me to cut my own finger as an offering to the soul trapped within the Pandora's parcel. The thought of self-mutilation filled me with dread, but I realized that I had no other choice. The darkness of the dark web had ensnared me, and I had to find a way to break free. With trembling hands, I raised the knife, ready to make the gruesome sacrifice. But just as the blade touched my skin, the world around me shifted. The hooded figure, the eerie box, and the haunting voice all faded away. I found myself back in my own room, the Pandora's parcel, and the knife gone. It was as if the entire nightmarish ordeal had been a hallucination, a grotesque fever dream. I couldn't be certain whether the dark web had shown me a glimpse of the supernatural, or if it had all been a product of my own disturbed imagination. The experience had left me shaken, a prisoner of my own paranoia and fear. I had glimpsed the dark and malevolent depths of the dark web, and the Pandora's parcel had shown me the price of curiosity. As I disconnected from the dark web, I couldn't help but wonder if the enigmatic box and its gruesome contents had been real or a manifestation of my own descent into madness. The dark web had revealed to me the true horrors that lurked in its depths, and I would forever carry the weight of the Pandora's parcel's malevolent mystery. And so, I am left with the haunting question. What lies hidden in the darkest corners of the internet? And what price are we willing to pay to uncover its secrets? I have learned the hard way that some mysteries are better left unsolved, some boxes better left unopened, and some secrets better left buried in the shadows. The dark web had always held a mysterious allure for me. Its shadows concealed a world of secrets and mysteries that I couldn't resist exploring. On a quiet night when the world above slept, I descended into the hidden depths of the web, not knowing that I was about to embark on a journey that would forever change my perception of reality. I launched the Tor browser, my gateway to the enigmatic corners of the internet. The dark web was a realm where anonymity reigned, and the digital veils of secrecy were tantalizingly thick. It was a place where curiosity and danger were intertwined, and I was drawn to it like a moth to a flame. As I navigated through the labyrinthine networks, I came across a link that beckoned me like a siren's call. The Whispering Gallery. The website was an enigma, with a black background and eerie, flickering text. Threads and forums on the site were filled with cryptic messages, encoded information, and discussions about the darkest of subjects. Users had usernames like Cryptic Watcher and Dark Scribe, revealing their commitment to the clandestine. It was as if I had entered a secret society, a digital realm where the line between fact and fiction blurred. One thread in particular caught my eye. It bore the title The Obsidian Oracle, promising insight into the deepest mysteries of the world. The thread contained testimonials from users who claimed to have received answers to their most pressing questions as though they had made contact with an entity beyond our comprehension. Intrigued, I scrolled through the testimonials, each more cryptic and unsettling than the last. The Obsidian Oracle was described as a source of forbidden knowledge, a digital seer that could reveal the hidden truths of the universe. As I read through the thread, I received a private message from an anonymous sender. It was a single question. Do you seek answers beyond the limits of the known? Without hesitation, I replied, Yes, I seek the truth. The response came swiftly, with coordinates and instructions for a midnight rendezvous in an abandoned, decaying library known as the Cryptic Archive. It was a place where the boundaries between reality and the supernatural had grown thin. The date was set for the next night, and I couldn't resist the call of the enigma. When the night of the meeting arrived, the cryptic archive loomed in the moonlight like a relic of forgotten history. The air was thick with the scent of aging books and decaying knowledge. I followed the instructions, navigating through the labyrinthine corridors until I reached the heart of the library. There, in a dimly lit chamber, I found a computer terminal, its screen emitting an eerie bluish glow. 
The Obsidian Oracle was about to reveal its secrets. The entity emerged as a digital presence, its voice a haunting whisper that seemed to emanate from the screen. Ask your question, it intoned. With trepidation, I typed my query, seeking answers to the deepest mysteries that had haunted me for years. The Obsidian Oracle responded in cryptic riddles and enigmatic verses, offering insights that seemed to transcend the boundaries of human understanding. But as I delved deeper into the Oracle's messages, I felt a growing sense of unease. It was as though the digital entity could see into the darkest corners of my soul, revealing secrets and fears I had never dared to acknowledge. The experience became increasingly unsettling, and I knew I had ventured into uncharted territory. Just when I thought I couldn't bear the weight of the Oracle's revelations any longer, the screen went dark. The cryptic archive seemed to come alive with whispers and the rustling of ancient pages. I was left in the darkness, my mind reeling from the encounter. As I disconnected from the dark web, I couldn't shake the feeling that the Obsidian Oracle had exposed a truth too profound to comprehend. The dark web had shown me a world where the line between reality and the unknown blurred, and I was left to grapple with the enigmatic knowledge I had uncovered. The digital seer had unveiled secrets that went beyond the limits of human understanding, and I was left to ponder the implications of what I had witnessed. The dark web had shown me that curiosity could lead to the most profound and unsettling revelations, and I couldn't help but wonder if the Obsidian Oracle's answers had come at a price too steep to bear. I had ventured into the shadows of the dark web, seeking answers to the mysteries of existence, but in the end, I was left with more questions than I had ever imagined. The boundaries of reality and the unknown had blurred, and I was forever changed by the experience. The dark web had become an obsession, a digital realm of secrecy and enigma that I couldn't resist exploring. It was as if I had crossed an invisible threshold into a world where the rules of the surface web no longer applied. Each night, I would venture deeper into the labyrinthine networks, searching for the next unknown enigma. On one particular evening, as the world above slept, I launched the Tor browser. The dark web was a place of anonymity, a place where hidden markets, shadowy forums, and encrypted messages ruled. It was a realm where the curiosity-driven were rewarded with knowledge beyond the boundaries of the known. I had heard whispers of a mysterious link, one that was not easily found. The website was known only as the Cryptic Nexus. Its digital pages were shrouded in darkness, adorned with symbols that seemed to pulse with an eerie life of their own. The forums within were filled with discussions about the most elusive and puzzling riddles of the digital realm. Usernames like Cypher Seeker and Enigma Whisper populated the site, hinting at the cryptic knowledge that lay within its virtual walls. It was a place where secrets were shared in hushed tones, and the boundaries between fact and fiction blurred. One particular thread piqued my interest. It was titled The Labyrinth of Shadows, and it promised to reveal the darkest and most perplexing mysteries of the dark web. The thread contained accounts from users who claimed to have ventured into the deepest uncharted realms of the digital abyss. I couldn't resist the temptation to explore further. A set of coordinates and cryptic instructions for a rendezvous the following night. It was to take place in a hidden chamber known as the Obscure Sanctum, a location where the boundaries between reality and the virtual world converged. As the night of the meeting arrived, I made my way to the specified location. The air was thick with an otherworldly anticipation, and the feeling of venturing into the unknown was inescapable. I reached the obscure sanctum, a subterranean chamber hidden beneath the city, its walls adorned with symbols that seemed to come to life under the dim, flickering light. In the heart of the chamber, a computer terminal awaited, its screen casting an eerie bluish glow. It was here that I would communicate with the enigmatic entity known as the Digital Oracle. The entity manifested as a spectral figure on the screen, its voice a haunting whisper. Ask your question, it intoned. With a mixture of apprehension and curiosity, I typed my query. I asked for insights into the most perplexing of digital enigmas, seeking answers to questions that had baffled me for years. The Digital Oracle responded in cryptic verses and riddles, 
offering insights that seemed to transcend the boundaries of human comprehension. As I absorbed the entity's messages, I felt a sense of enlightenment, as though I were on the brink of unraveling the deepest of mysteries. The digital oracle had revealed secrets that went beyond the limits of the known, and I was intoxicated by the enigmatic knowledge I had uncovered. Just as I thought I had reached the threshold of understanding, the screen went dark. The obscure sanctum seemed to come alive with whispers, as though the very walls were breathing ancient secrets. I was left in the dark, my mind reeling from the encounter. As I disconnected from the dark web, I couldn't help but wonder if the digital oracle had shown me the path to enlightenment, or if it had led me deeper into the labyrinth of enigma. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe.